If you're like me, one of the number one things you do when traveling is to try new food. Today we're in Los Angeles, also known as a city of angels, to try all the top 10 viral places that you recommended. From fast food chains to fine dining, this list has it all. So let's try it together to see if it's worth the hype. Our first stop is the West Coast legend In-N-Out Burger, a must-try fast food joint that originated in California. As someone who loves Shake Shack, let's see if it's worth the hype. Today we're trying their iconic Double Double, the TikTok famous 4x4 burger, which consists of four beef patties and four cheese, their secret menu of animal-style fries, which is crispy fries topped with gooey cheese, grilled onion topped with their secret sauce, and of course, their legendary shake. Honestly, the burgers tasted really, really fresh, especially for fast food. The patties were juicy, the sauce was delicious, but don't hate me, I do find these burgers to be a little bit overhyped. Dom, however, loved his 4x4 burger and devoured it right away. We both agree that the meat to bun ratio of 4x4 is a little bit better. Personally, as a Canadian, I don't think animal style fries is better than poutine, but it is iconic. So I would say give it a try, but make sure to eat it right away while it's hot. I personally love their milkshake, which is a great value and super creamy and delicious. Overall, if you've never tried In-N-Out before, you definitely need to give it a try. Is it worth the hype? Eh, but for the price, and if you're in LA, you've got to give it a try. Number two on the list is Sugarfish. I always see people ordering these boxes, and I have to say for takeout, this box is beautiful. I'm so excited. I hope I'm not disappointed again. First bite. Mm. I ordered their Nozara Trust Me, which consists of albacore sushi, salmon sushi, Japanese yellowtail sushi, hirame sushi, sea bream sushi, Dungeness crab hand roll, toro hand roll, tuna sashimi, and adamame for $40. I also ordered unagi sushi, scallop sushi, pink lobster sushi, and otoro sushi. The most highly recommended scallop. Mm. Overall, we spent around $87, which was pretty pricey. Okay, I have a little confession. I actually tried sugarfish before and I didn't like it, but since this was super, super highly, highly recommended, I had to give it another try. This is $14. Let's see if it's worth it. Honestly, everything was pretty fresh. I personally really like the pink lobster sushi and the scallop sushi. It's good, but is it $14? Mm. It's okay. <laughs> However, maybe because I'm from Vancouver, where we have some of the best sushis at affordable prices, I don't know if all this was worth $87, but it was really pretty, really nicely packaged. I think it's great for a fancy date night at home. Speaking of overpriced food, I had to visit Irwan, known as the most expensive grocery store in the world. Other than the super overpriced food, I have to give it to Irwan for their attention to detail. Like look at these beautifully sliced vegetables and fruit. I've seen so many TikToks all over the internet trying their super expensive smoothies. In total, I spent almost $60 for three smoothies. This better be worth the hype. First off, we got the famous Hailey Bieber smoothie, which was honestly really, really good. I found it a little bit too sweet, but I think if you love bananas, you will definitely love this smoothie. Next, we got the Malibu Mango. This one has collagen, which was apparently really, really good for your skin. Hands down, this was my personal favorite in terms of taste. It's a great balance of tangy and sweet. Ooh, that's so good. Mm. And finally, we got the Coconut Cloud Smoothie, which tasted um very interesting. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a great experience, but it's definitely not worth the hype and definitely not worth $20 per smoothie. But if you're curious like me, definitely go try it out. Out of everything on my list, I was most excited to try Samnongdang in Koreatown, which specializes in galbi jim, braised beef short ribs and backbone. Upon walking in, I was so impressed by the delicious smell and my mouth instantly watered. 
Even while waiting for our food, the side dishes were so delicious, I had to stop myself from eating them just so I can save my stomach for the star dish. We ordered Gabi Jim, which was our most famous dish. It consists of short ribs, braised potatoes, and carrots. Plus, we added extra rice cakes and cheese, which was packed with so much flavor. They melted the cheese right at the table, and this was a show. We got the medium portion, and this was super filling for four people. The beef was super tender and melted off the bone, and I especially loved the potatoes, which just soaked up all the delicious goodness. As someone who loves soup, I also ordered their salam tang oxbone soup. This meal was definitely worth the hype, and the soup literally warmed my soul. I would say the food is definitely more on the sweeter side when it comes to Asian cuisine, but overall, I would highly recommend it. Plus, they're open 24 hours, the perfect place to go eat after karaoke. While we're in K-Town, let's go grab some Korean barbecue. There were so many popular places such as Quarters, Parks Barbecue, and much more, but today we're trying Bokjong for some late night Korean barbecue. We ordered the premium pork belly, boneless beef short ribs, and the prime ribeye. And it came out with a bunch of free side dishes to try, including steamed egg, which I love. My favorite part is that they cook everything for you. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, grab a drink, and eat. Like, look at the beautiful marbling on this meat. My personal favorite is their boneless beef short ribs when wrapped in rice paper. Oof, 10 out of 10. This was probably one of my favorite meals during this trip. Fresh beer, tender meat, good vibes, even better company. What else can you ask for? Speaking of noodles, I have to talk about Marugame Monzo, located in Little Tokyo. I love Little Tokyo so much. Every time I come to LA, I have to go visit. We ordered their most popular udon, the miso carbonara, the mentai squid butter udon, and beef udon. The noodles were freshly made, so it was super chewy and everything tasted really fresh. I personally love the beef udon and miso carbonara udon, and I'm thinking of filming a quick 20-minute copycat recipe in the new year. I highly recommend coming on a weekday to avoid the line, or else I have actually lined up for more than two hours before on a weekend. While the portions are a little bit small, this place is definitely worth the hype, and I highly, highly recommend. If you ask me, out of everything on this list, what was the most worth it? I would say 100% Avenue 26 Tacos. There's nothing on this menu that can go wrong. Honestly, it was so delicious that me and Dom went back multiple times after filming this. For only $1.50 per taco, the meat cannot be more juicy, flavorful, and fresh. Honestly, every bite was the perfect bite. Don't forget to ask for the free mini potatoes, which soak up all the delicious juices from the meat. 10 out of 10, highly, highly recommend. This looks so good. So good. What is a trip to Hollywood without trying Pink's Hot Dog? This has been on my must-try list for years. Pink's Hot Dog has been the Hollywood landmark since 1939. They have so many different combinations, but I knew I had to try their classic chili hot dog. Upon the first bite, I fell in love. The chili was packed with so much flavor, and every bite was so perfect. Really 
Too bad we were only here for a quick snack, but I would definitely come back again and try their other hot dogs. 100% worth the hype. One of my favorite meals of the trip was Bestia, a multi-regional Italian restaurant in the art district of downtown LA. I won't lie, I had my doubts, but wow, this was definitely a night to remember and I would definitely come here again. Everything on the menu was delicious. We came here to celebrate our launch with our team and we ordered a little bit of everything on the menu. The menu was recommended for family style dining, so around two to three dishes per person was perfect. My personal favorite dishes was for sure the herb salad, roasted marrow bone, squid ink pasta, and their grilled bronzino. The cocktails were also really delicious, 100% I will come again. Make sure to reserve ahead of time since this place is super popular. Next up, we had to try Holland Ray's Nashville Chicken, known for their famous spicy chicken burger. This was the number one recommended place to try on the list and as someone who loves fried chicken and spicy food, let's see if it's worth the hype. Order wings, chicken tenders, two chicken sando, and fries. In total, we spent around $62. A little bit more expensive compared to in and out but just smelling the food alone, I think this is worth every penny. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really regret not getting mild because the sandwiches were so spicy. The chicken was really juicy and the bun was buttery soft, but I really couldn't eat a lot of the food because it was way too spicy for me. It was so spicy I had to rinse my mouth. My team and Dom, however, who can handle spice, loved it and rated it an 8 out of 10. I will 100% come back again and try their less spicy options because the chicken was super juicy. Okay, I can't, I can't eat it. Oh my god, guys. Oh, I feel really sick. Okay, I'm not eating anymore. Last but not least, I had to include my Kaidong pop up event to celebrate our launch. This was our first ever in person event, and I worked with Chef Alan to create the perfect menu for the launch. We worked on months to prepare for the event, and we even got together the night before to do all the final tasting and testing. This is the first one. This sauce is so good. <laughs> I didn't even have one mushroom left. Yeah, it's like The first dish was cold sesame noodles, which was super refreshing and savoring noodle dish featuring our sun-dried QQ noodles and Mama's chili oil. We then served our pork and shrimp wontons featuring Mama chili oil, golden shallot oil, and four seasoned scallion sauce, which was super delicious, highly recommend. Next up, we had grilled corn inspired by Taiwanese Night Market featuring our four seasoned scallion sauce and Mama's chili oil. I'll definitely do a recipe on this later. Our main dish are classic dried noodles, which is basically the perfect bowl of noodles featuring sun-dried hand-cut noodles, mama's chili oil, golden shallot sauce, and four seasoned scallion sauce. Last but not least, my personal favorite for the night are Taiwanese chicken and rice. One of the most iconic street foods in Taiwan featuring golden shallot oil and four seasoned scallion sauce. 
I'll also do a recipe on this dish too. Thank you everyone so much for your support for the product launch. I can't believe we sold out of our starter set before pre-sale. It was also so much fun meeting every single one of you, and I hope to do more in-person events in the future. So make sure to sign up for our newsletter before for our next taste test event and also when we restock. Let me know if you like this type of travel video and what are some LA restaurants that didn't make the list that I should try next time. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!